Zergo. Yeah. This yeah. is an, this is an honor, Bredgen. This is an honor to sit here and talk to you. Yeah, respect. One hundred percent. But we're not here to talk about yeah. me and you right now. We're here to talk about cannabis. Yeah. Zergo, you probably know cannabis better than I do. Right. But what I want to talk about is his journey for the last, say, two years. Because we know, you know, his mom passed away unexpectedly. Yeah. And then not too long after that, his whole crew basically reshuffled. Some members left. Right. And he had to really pull himself together. What do you, right. what, what do you, what do you think his journey has been like for the last two years, you know, and his resiliency and for him to just keep going? Because what he has gone through would have taken most of us out. What do you think about his journey for the last two years? He loved the music and he loved what he's doing. And he, he, he didn't just pursue this because he feel like, boy, this is the way me for do this and make I get enough girls. Basically, his mom used to live right next to me in Barnsville. When, when Dan was a little boy, three, four years of age, his mom used to live right next to me in Barnsville. So he came up around Pisendot. Them days I was playing with Pisendot. So he come up and he saw a few things that we used to do and he fell in love with the music. They moved to town and then, you know, him seeing um, Joseph Fire from Mac 10 Sound, him seeing Tash from Baby Can um, from Cannabis Sound, that's a, a guy who passed away, may his soul rest in peace. He, he been, he been looking at a lot of sound system operators for a very long time. I'm, and when I say for a long time, I mean, I could say from around age 12. Because when he was in Barnsville, he was even younger than 12. By the time he left, he hit teenager age going up. So he didn't just pursue this because he think that he can get some girls or he think maybe, you know, he'll be, he'll be popular. He really, really love this sound culture business. He really, really love it. And that's very important. And I think, that, that's a very important thing, this love of this music, because we see a lot of guys get into this and they think it's like, yeah, this is going to get me some fame and I could come, you know, walk up Market Street and pop my shoulder. And I think you're right. This is the thing that I think has really kept him going. Like I said, he's been through a lot. This love of this music and a lot of people we have seen don't really love the music like maybe we think they should. And that's why they don't really, you know, rise to the level that they think they should and they, you know, they, whatever. But I, I right. like you talk about his love of this music, and I think that's what has really sustained him, you know, going through all this trials and tribulation. Yeah. Also, he's um. His mom loved music too, and she always pushed him. She, I think, his mom is his biggest fan. Yes. And when I started working for Sun FM, he lived right next to Sun FM radio station. So every afternoon before me go up, me used to burn a split with him, whole of vibes, then me go up and work. Sometimes you come check me on the whole of vibes and you know we did it. When we come back downstairs, cannabis. Sometimes him there listen to me and say, Zugo, me see I play this artist. Like Romain Virgo, me now toot my hand. Romain Virgo and me first play me in Antigua. For some reason, cannabis heard him heard me playing him the afternoon, heard me interviewing him, and said, Yo, who the artist them? I say, Romain Virgo. Him say, Yo, wicked artist, you know. By two years after Romain started blowing up, Cannabis called me one afternoon after work. As I said, I'm working right next to the way he lived. I come downstairs from work. I used to do the two to six mix. Mm -hmm. Six o'clock, me done work, come downstairs. Cannabis say, Zogo, me want to chat to you. I say, what? He say, my love, one song me hear you play today for Romain. I want to write that. I want to get up on dub plate. You think you can link me up? I say, sure. Me give you a Vikings number. I don't want to be a middleman. Me just give you the number and you link him. He say, no, man, more, you link it up for me. Me link Vikings, tell Vikings this is my little cousin, I want to be with him proper, proper, proper. The next day I come to work, he start writing the song, but he had problems. He says, Zuga, I want you. see you write song, I know you're into the thing long time. Wait, how you think I can write this song over? I see what he have, I read what he have, and I say, all right, change that, change that, change that. No, Cannabis is one of the best writers for dub plates in the island of Antigua. When, when you're talking about penning a dub plate, writing it over, him is one of the best right now. I hear some dubs that he write over. I'ma say, yo, him. He love the music. Him love it. Him love it. Him really love it. Him really love it. That's very important because you said he's one of the best writer of dub plays in Antigua. I think it's beyond that. I've listened to his some of his customs. He bad. He bad on rewriting. He's bad. bad. He's bad at rewriting he bad. customs. He's, he's bad. bad. And like you were there from the beginning, man. You were there from the beginning, so you saw it, and you you have seen his evolution. I saw him grow, and um, 
I was around his crew for a while because they used to keep a Sunday dance, him and a brother named Gussie. Mm -hmm. They used to keep a Sunday dance and me used to be the host for the dance. And I saw his growth with the business because he never just wanted dub plates or his name to be called in a dub plate. I have sound system like Stonewall and Exorcist. He wanted to have a, a, a place where people can know to go find cannabis. This is my location. You can come to this dance every Friday or Saturday or Sunday. He wanted to be, he wanted to be known in Antigua as a sound enthusiast, a sound entrepreneur, a sound owner, and just talk about sound system culture. He wanted to be a part of it. He wanted to do the whole nine yards. He didn't want to skip no part. Like when he was starting to build his sound, he asked me a few questions. What do you think we should have do? What do you think we should have start with? And me tell him, yo, sound system where I'm coming from is not just a rec, it's not just a laptop and a, and a controller. It's you must have speakers. I'm him say, all right, me I gotta do it. And he done it. He did it. He went make sure him get dub, um his amplifiers, his speakers, him bill over him speaker box. Yo, it's one of the f first sound system operators or owners that I would say. Me see him travel the whole nine yard to make sure him do everything correct. And he's not afraid to make mistakes and then correct it. He's not afraid. He will make like like for instance when he was clashing against um the sounder from New York, Jamie Hawk, um Young Hawk. Young Hawk, Jamie them. I tell him, yo, you take that date then? Him say, Zogo. Nobody in Antigua now clash. No sound that time, no sound in Antigua was clashing. Clashing sounds, the clash, whole clash culture was down. Him put it back up. Can, cannabis put back up the sound clash culture in Antigua. It was dead. It was dormant for a minute. He said cannabis, so he put this thing back on his back and put it back up. He brought it back. Yeah, he put the whole thing on his shoulder and said, yo, me got clash. I'm going to say, you can't win. I tell him, you can't win the dance. He said, Zugo, me a business about winning up. Me just business about for God represent for Antigua and the culture. I said, all right. Him went, him did it. I commented on his status on Facebook saying, why you take the dance? And a few things me said to him on his status. And he messaged me one away and said, yo, I mean, I like that. Why you never message me one away and tell me why you put it on Facebook like that? I yes. said, all right. I said, all right. Cannabis, my apologies. I should have really contacted you one, one away. But through your post, this thing about the whole clash and how you see yes. the clash and the experience. Me just post that, but me say, all right, my my bad. And me and him never had a bad turn. Cannabis always would have called he me. He wanted to know what kind of dubs he should be cutting right now. And me tell him, listen, you got cut the plate, you want to clash or you want to juggle? Because he was a juggling sound first. He was pure juggling, and then he started to get into the sound. This is back, way back now. I'm going to tell him, start with the foundation. Make sure your foundation side of the box is strong if you're going to get into Sound Clash. And he started to strengthen up his foundation side of the box. When he cut a song, he used to be so happy, he used to come. As I said, I was working right next to where he lives. He still lives there up to now. He used to call me when I finished work and said, Zogo, listen this. Listen, blood clad, this. <laughs> and he used to play. I'm going to say, hmm, yeah, work, yeah, work. So he loved, listen, dub plates. He would listen to a dub plate and eventually sit down and say, May I go play this dub plate in a third round? So I'm going to write it specially for the third round. That's how smart he is. That's how deep he goes into the music. He not just cut dub for cut dub's sake. He used to tell me, Zugo, you see the third round? I got dub, you want to play. And I said, But why third round? This, this is a first round song. I said, No. He said, No. May I go write it over specially for the third round? And if the sound that me I play against played first round, the way how me write my own, it have a counteract that. He started to analyze for himself that he could have basically write over a dub so deep that even if a song played him, him for his write over can counteract the right. The play other better. Songs dub. Play better. Play better. Let me let's go back to something you said earlier about him. As far as like you said, he made a post on Facebook. And then you commented, and then he caught your vibe and hit you up. I had a same issue with with Stinger. Stinger had, you know, he had just he just had a clash, and I made a comment. And the same vibe you're talking about with you, I had the same vibes. 
I had the same yeah. vibe. All right, we still have we had the same vibe. <laughs> yeah. This is what I'm asking you. And like, so you think it's easy to get under his skin? Not in a not in a clash. Not in a clash per se. But he's a very emotional virgin. As you can see when he cast against Stonewall the other day online. He, he wished his mom was there and he started to cry, you know, and bring tears. So he's very emotional and he takes this thing very serious. And it's not because, the reason why I think he's very emotional because he loves music. You know when somebody don't really care about the music, them just whatever. You, you see it, you see it. Music. You can see that one, two, yeah. three. Yeah. He loved the music so much that he doesn't want you to comment and tell him certain things that he don't think are so it go. He wants you to call him one away and chew to him because he's going to listen. He's all listening. Bye. And I think the best, the best learners are the best listeners. Listen. He's a student of the he game. Don't want, he don't want the whole world to see that you're telling him something that maybe he know already. He prefer you call him and tell him, and he would have tell you now, me know that, but this is why me do it. He want to keep it one on one. But he will listen. If you call him one away and... Let's talk about his mom because you keep his mom and this love of this music. How much him losing his mom, and when you say losing his mom, we're talking about a very young age. How much you think that affected him? Affected him a lot because he stopped playing music for a while. As I say again, I keep saying this, me work right next to where he live. And I saw all the changes it took on him. When his mom passed and me come downstairs from work, me not see him. I mean, I asked the man with cannabis, him said, them say, remember him, I run around with his mother and the funeral and the whole nine yard thing. And when me do see him, I ask him, yo, what go on? And him says, Zugu boy, me just a try to hold the thing together, but my greatest fan gone. And I say, no worry about that because she got want to see you do good in this thing and she wouldn't want to see you stop. He said, him know if him can. Him tell me this personally. Him saying, I don't know if I would be able to continue this without my mother. So he took it hard when his mom passed. Him took it, him took it real, real, real seriously hard to the point that he wanted to give up playing music. Wow. You he used to go to listen. He used to go visit his mom every night when she was sick in the hospital. He used to post pictures of her every time him go. Him post a picture and say, see my favorite fan here. Y'all pray for her. She got come out to the hospital and she got good again and we got good dance again and we got win clash together. That's how much he knew his mom was his biggest fan. He don't care which girl, which brethren, which friend, which associate, who said that them are his biggest fan. He don't care about that. His mother is his biggest fan. Up to this day, all when she gone, may her soul rest in peace, Janice. That's cannabis biggest fan. So you could say this is part of his drive because you see he has this this drive, like he has to prove something, and you're telling me that's this. This is where this is coming from. Yeah, and and whenever he's going to class, when they see him tie up the Antigua flag on his shoulder, around him head, him are not heads with his mother. This is conversations that me and him sit and talk about. When I was in Antigua, not last year, the year before, I interviewed him. And he says, Zugo, anytime you see me go, go dance, you know, and go out clash, you know. The first person me talk to when I'm my mother, you know. I talk to she, and she, sometimes she tell me, yo, go bring home the trophy. And this was happening since she was alive. So when she passed, him still keep that connection, even though he can't see her. Spiritually, to him, when that voice in his head, he said, rings in his head, to him, that's his mom talking to him. And if the voice say, go for the trophy, he might go get it. Mad. He never, he, the next thing I realized about him, he never think no one is better than him. And he don't think he's better than no one. He thinks, let's settle it on the battlefield. Prove to me that you sound bad at my son. So see, when him go clash against Young Hawk or any other sound, he don't care how much dubs you got. He's going to use what he have to compete against you. Because one time him asked me, what was my drive? coming up in Python that for clash against two giants, Stonewall and Exorcist. Me tell him something like this. Imagine a man coming to your house with a M16 and you have a 38. What are you going to do? Him say, me I use what I have. Me say, there you go. 
no matter how, no matter how much dubs a man have, man could have 16 million dubs and you only have 38 dubs. Use what you have and go around it. Fact. But with the 38 dubs, you have to fire for the head because remember he's an M16. A man with an M16 can just spray and, and take you out. So with your 38, like a 38 caliber, you have to shoot point blank with his head. So when you have less dubs, shoot hard. Don't waste time and feel like you can play around and easy. Shoot from the first round. And he, I think he traveled with that. We saw that. Let's come now. Let's come to the present and this Stonewall dance he did. That was a big win for him. How do you? How, what's okay. your? Give me a give me a take on his Stonewall killing. But what I saw he did, he tricked Whitney in the in the tune for tune. Him lost them in other juggling. Facts. In other juggling, he, him play him play more more. I would say fitter. Like you know, like we say. Fit test a sound, you have to fit, 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 fit. Energy was up, a lot of energy, a lot of energy. A lot of energy in the juggling. So to me, he lost them in at the juggling. Um, in the tune for tune, he's, he trick with me. What him do, he play some big songs that him now tune for tunes for have, and then him go go play Basel Kid. Then him play some songs that like Stonewall, like the, like the Garnet Silk, him, him write it over with this artist that sound like Garnet Silk. And the Jack here and Caper Tan him in, in cut it cut he mash up the box a kind of way. So he mash up Whitney box and then instead of Whitney went for a different formula, Whitney tried to follow that. And he got with when well, from the minute he saw Whitney follow, he said, Yeah, we have him. Good. I think he, he learned good. something from the um this last clash in March with em um war is on foreign invasion, you know. Because he went tune for tune with Emperor. And Emperor went new tune alkaline and he didn't follow and he lost. So I, I think he learned something from that, you know. There you go. There you go. You have it right. That's what he did. He basically switched up the tune for tune on Whitney. Start playing new songs. When he knows coming up in the sound system culture, a big tune run tune for tune. John Holt, Freddie McGregor, David Dobson, wherever big song you go for, them are the songs you would have played in a tune for tune. He knows that. But him say, yo, this is an unlike. And new, generation. Like new, generation. New, new generation, new generation, new yeah. generation. This dead artist right? thing that <coughs> new generation. Yeah, because you know, you know what? He knows also. He watched it grow. He watched it grow from us, Stonewall Exorcist to to Pison that level coming right up. He watched it grow, and he realized, say, this thing is not gonna stay in a box all the time. It's gonna always evolve. So this whole dead artist thing and vintage artist in a tune for tune, it's not going to stand up for long in the sound system culture because it has to evolve. It can't stay one way forever. He just learned, that's he, a quick, he just learned that lesson. He just learned that lesson. He, he, learned. he yeah. just learned that yeah. lesson. You think he just, he, you know, yeah. he, you think he took the throne from Whitney as like, yo, I make you the flag now, you know? He, he, he took, he took, he took, he took the flag since the same clash with Young Hawk. I started to give him the flag for Antigua since Young Hawk. When we see him push out himself, is he get Whitney back into the clash arena? Is he get all them sound to start cut song and move again? Mad. To what I saw when I get, went back to Antigua and we see, yo, this guy here, uh, I move. You can ask anybody who is really following the sound system culture in Antigua. Clash was dead. When he started the clash again, everybody wanted to start cut back dubs and clash and clash and clash. The whole clash thing start build back up. He Stinger. even he even did he even did his hosted his own clash country versus town. You know, I think he lost the one with rupture. Yeah. And I asked him this time I didn't make the mistake to message him on Facebook. I well, that's where I got in trouble. That's where I got in trouble. <laughs> <laughs> that's where I ran in trouble. That's where I ran yeah. in trouble. That's where I ran in trouble. So I, I messaged him one away and I tell him, what do you think? Because I hosted the clash, me and Swamp. Uh -huh. And he say, yo, we did not shoot the song them too fast. And what he learned is the ambience you set for the night, that tells the tales on the patrons who's listening, standing there in the audience. So when we listen back the audio now, him last rupture. But the night, the night rupture played for the crowd in the dance the night. Very important. But, very but, important but point. We, very important. But when you listen back, you say, whoa, 
cannabis play a whole heap of song. The like mixing was off. The, the mixing was off. The mixing was the mixing way was off. off. It was too much songs, too much songs. Next song, next song. The song didn't even get a chance to build up together forward. Next song. And then the bridge in them, Scamo and, and the bridge in them from um, so, Rupture. Yes. Them was taking them time and giving it to him. Take them time. So when you listen back to Clash, if you hear 12 songs in the 20 minute round for, for Rapture, Cannabis, 20 minute round, you hear 40, 40 songs. It was, yeah, it was, yeah, it, the mixing wasn't there at all. The mixing wasn't there. So let's move into the he, he present. Let's move into yeah. the present. This Saturday, he's clashing the sound, King Vower from Canada. You know, he's on his way to New York. He's by himself now. He doesn't have Jelly Belly, who's not getting a lot of credit. And if you're not giving Jelly Belly his due, I suggest you say Jelly Belly. He's moving solo right now. He's going to go by himself to clash online. Do you think that's going to affect him a little bit or no? No. You know why? This guy plays in his house every night, every morning, every afternoon by himself. Whether there's no selector or nobody come and visit him, Sometimes I go check him and say, yo, may I come check in? I'm saying, yeah, I'm a dead yard. When we go there, the system on. His system don't turn off until he's ready. Sometimes the system don't even turn off even when he's sleeping. He's always practicing. He's always playing. You and got a to. matter of fact, he told me when he plays by himself, he has a better vibe. Because he knows what's coming. He, he's listening to the song in the, dub, in, in the headphones while he's queuing it up. So he knows what's coming. What do you think is coming this Saturday? What do you think is coming? Because we have a whole new audience for him. Saturday, what do you, you know, no Jing Band Clash. What do you think is coming from Cannabis? What do you think he's going to bring? What do you think he has to bring to really capture this? I never heard the next song. So I can't compare and say, yo, it's a walkover. It's not a walkover. But what I know is that he have learned so much from his past clashes that I think he's going to come on a high level because this is what he wanted. He wanted, he wanted this. This is the time that he was looking for, that he's representing Antigua on a high level. Never been to World Clash. He never been to some top stages in the world where clashes is, is concerned. But now he thinks all of this online clash, the world is seeing it. Right? He wants to see by the world. He wants to be seen by the world. He wants to be seen by the world representing Antigua flying the flag. So he's going to come with a very high formula. Well, that's where I got in trouble. After the, um, the country versus town clash, because I saw the way they played, and I saw what's going on, and then he got locked off. I made a comment, and I said, based on that performance, you're not, you, you know, neither of them was, to me, was ready for the world stage, meaning... A world clash because from that right. performance that's not gonna cut it on the world stage and that's when he wanted to chop my neck off that's when he went for he cut this and... <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah you mean i'm gonna let you i'm gonna wrap it up so you can get to go now Zugo. so let's let's move forward now what do you think the future holds for dion what do you think the future holds for stinger he's gonna be he's gonna be um one of the top songs coming out of Antigua, representing Antigua. He's not going to give up. And his future looks very bright because, as I said, the love of music. He's not doing this He's not doing this for likes. He's not doing this for fame. He really loves this music culture. And I've been around him a lot. I know him. I don't know him inside out, but I know him a lot to the point of me know he wants to be the number one sound representing Antigua. And he's not afraid to bring other young sounds with him. If you see our next song trying, trying, he's going to help that song. Sting is a he good youth. Think... Sting is a good youth. He's, he's, he's a, a good, good, good youth. youth. And he works very hard. He works very hard. I said, I said something yeah. that I think he misinterpreted. I was Antigua for five years solid. And the hardest sound system, the hardest man I saw working in Antigua was Stinger. And I said, man, he was working too hard. Because sometimes I think you're working, working, working. You're so caught up in it. You're not, you know, you're not really, but you're just working, working, working. And yeah. like I said, because it was public, Stinger got out my head. But let yeah. me tell you something. For the last clash, you know, the uh, foreign invasion, you know, I know Emperor. 
you know. And I said, right. yo, all these young sons, you guys are the future. You think about, they think right. about, y'all need to start doing this thing right now. Y'all need to right. feel each other and start, you know, start getting a sense because you guys need to exercise on each other because you guys are going to run it. And I think it was good for him. I think it was good for everybody, man. I, that was a really good yeah. experience overall. You know, and I, like I said, younger, I think he learned a lot. The younger sounds now from each era, whether it's in Europe, Canada, England, Antigua, the Caribbean, wherever they're coming from, I think right now, Stingers, Stingers is in the top department in, up in those young sounds. Wherever, Sting up there. Sting up, up there. there in, Don't tell him I say this. No matter, Sting up there. Which, Sting up there. Yeah, no matter which young sound you can go for anywhere in the world, he up he's there. up there. He went tune for tune. He had a good night. He chose first, yeah. and he came out swinging. Yeah. I like the way he started, man. He came in with yeah. the, um, like a um, Beanie Man murder. I'm like, oh, right. I felt that. Yeah. And, yeah, man. He's a good entertainer. Overall, you, know how many, you know how many clashes this brother man lose? And him lose clash after clash after clash after clash. And him say, Zugo, me a business. Me have, me have to learn with losing first before we can start win. Me say, you have the thing right, you know. Go on, do your thing, brethren. You if I saw your thing, if you th saw your thing, go on, do your thing, brethren, because you're, you're, it's only, you're only going to get better. So I Facts. think the future is bright for him. I think he's going to be excellent in this clash coming up. Um, no Jing Bang clash. And here's Glenn. And Don't forget Glenn. I think Glenn has been really, you know, a, a stable influence for him. And if, so long as he keep that going, you know, I think... He has a good team. He has a good team. And Glenn... Some of the things... In this online clash that I hope he's getting done, he's getting people to realize that they have to be online and register and getting themselves together to vote. The voting for this is going to be crucial because I don't think yeah. the, it's not the best sound, you know, the voting. You need to get your vote. people to vote. To vote. You need to get your people. Sign up on, sign up on Twitch. Yeah. Get the vote. You have to vote. If you don't vote. It's not going to make no sense. And it'd be sad it's to see him, anybody, yeah. any song go out there and kill it and don't get the votes. Right. So I'm hoping that he's working on that end of it. And I'm wishing him all the best. And I know he's going to he's gonna do good because, as I know, he loves this music. So I know he's going to do very good and he's going to make me proud.